So, you know, the thing that I noticed is that there are so many advanced techniques and little things that I do and have been doing since like, say, 2010, that it becomes like a duh moment, right? Like, of course, everybody should know this, but I am surprised to how many of you reach out to me when working with raw footage and people are just like, what are we doing wrong? We're getting better results shooting in ProRes than when we shoot in raw with a particular camera. It's very confusing. If you don't necessarily understand color science or what's really going on, it could be extremely daunting. So in this video, as always, I'm going to give you the meat, the thing that you need. For a lot of you guys, I feel like this is going to be an ultimate game changer. So get pumped. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no bullshit, straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. Let's get it. I'm gonna start doing a wrist check. I just wanna know like how many watch people are watching my content. Like if you can tell me what this is in the comments section, I will be very impressed. Okay, inside resolve dot R3D. That means this is a red raw file. If I click on this shot and we look at the metadata, we can see this is indeed R3D 6K. Let's uh, bring this puppy in. Looks great. Let's go to our color page, cover this up. So I have my vector scope, my waveform. Everything looks great. Everything is protected. Nothing is blown out. And, uh, but what's going on? Why is everything maxed out? I mean, this is a raw clip, right? So then why is it looking like this is already converted? Because if I go in my settings and in my color management, this is set to no color management applied. We don't have DaVinci Resolve color management or a ACES or anything applied to it. So then what's going on? A lot of people I know personally that are in my course and that I coach on one-on-one -on -one basis and these guys are struggling with this exact issue. They shoot something, it comes in resolve and they shoot it really well, but then they just think that, oh, we have all the data available here. Everything is in 20 stops of dynamic range. Let's start making magic. Well, it's not as simple as that right now your footage secretly is converted to Rec. 709. You just don't know it yet. And everything is choked. I mean, look at your colors are kind of maxing out. So this is no good. You don't want to work with that. The entire idea of using a tool like Resolve is that you want to work with a blank canvas. You don't want to start somewhere where everything is so choked and pushed that what are you going to do? I mean, look at the top, look at the bottom. I mean, you're done. Compared to if I were to show you Let's just say even like a graded movie like Sicario. And if we pull up this image, even a graded film has so much more room to play with compared to where you're starting out. So you never want to be here. This is absolutely trash. So let's go here. And what we see is that it's saying that it's set to, under our camera raw, camera metadata. So when you're shooting, our cinematographer had certain settings set inside the camera. Those are the settings that are coming through in here. And that's what we're getting here, okay? Now, in our settings, we can go in and change it on the back end, but let's just stay here and look at what we can do to fix this. So what we want to do, because this everything is converted right now, Direct 709, we don't want that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change that to clip. And then once I change it to a clip level, this gives me all the options that I need to start making the adjustments that I want to make to actually open up this image. For right now, the color science is set to legacy. So for red, they went through a bunch of different iterations with their color science, with their color space, with their gamma curve. And that's very common. I mean, you've probably seen Blackmagic do the same thing. It's like Blackmagic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like now we're on uh, Gen 5. So. For color science, instead of legacy, I want to select IPP2, which stands for Image Processing Pipeline 2. I mean, pretty obvious, right? Like if you didn't know that, you're stupid. So let's just set it to IPP2. And then color space, we don't want to set it to Rec. 709. And what is happening? What's going on here? This is what's going on. Apply metadata curves. So whatever was applied in camera on the back end is coming through right now. So as soon as I uncheck this, that took care of that problem. Our image is opening up. 
compared to before. So this is already looking good. IPP2 is their most advanced color science. So when you're working in red, you want to be here. You don't want to be in legacy. You don't want to be in original because those are older formats. Now, color space, we don't want Rec. 709 because this is choked. This is gone. If I go here and show you what's going on, I mean, we're maxing out everything, man. We don't want that. We want to have full control. So then I'm going to click on color space and there's all these options. I want to select red, white, gamut, RGB. Why is that? Because this is the whitest color gamut you can select recommended by red that is going to give you the most amount of color gamut and color range to play with. Whether you are ending up converting your footage to DCI-P3, whether you want to deliver Rec. 709, whether you want to deliver HDR, this is the color space you want to be in. As soon as I do that, this happens. And then you'll probably go, bro, like this looks so much worse than before. That's okay. Because we're opening up our image. We're buying back all of that real estate. Now we're moving on to our gamma curve. Our gamma curve right now is set to Rec. 709. Once again, a very strong S curve. We don't want that. We want to open it up. We want to have more room. So now this is where it gets very confusing. There's so many freaking options. So what are you supposed to select? You're supposed to select log 3G10. Okay. And this is what Red recommends as their latest format that gives you the most amount of dynamic range to pull from. And especially this scene. Why did I pick this scene? Because we got these bright lights in our scene. We have a crazy latitude happening from like dark to bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select log 3 G10. And now if we look at our waveform, it opened up as it should have been. And finally, the most important reason why you want to pick these settings is because this standardizes your entire color science across multiple red cameras, which means shot matching is going to be a piece of cake. So now I want to go here for a second to our Rec. 709 again, and I want to save that version just so we have something to compare it to. So this is our Rec. 709. Now I'm going to come out and this is our log. So now we are ready to grade. Okay. Now, this is how you want to set up your camera raw when you're working with red. Obviously, you can make these adjustments as well, but I'm not going to get into that. I wanted to touch base on the color science part of it. So now that we have that, it becomes very easy. We're going to create three nodes and we're going to create this beautiful staircase that your Uncle Kazi creates every single time. We're going to put color space transform right here. I'm going to change that to red, white gamut because that's what's coming in. And then input gamma is what? Input gamma is red log 3G10. That's what's coming in. We are going to work in DaVinci white gamut. Why are we going to do that? Because that gives us about 30 stops of dynamic range. So whatever red has to throw at it, it can handle it and then some. That's why we're going to work in this color space. I worked in ASUS. I worked in RE Color Science. I get the best results inside DaVinci White Gamut. It's just so freaking good. And then here, I'm going to drop color space transform because we want to create a nice DaVinci White Gamut sandwich. Okay. And then here, we're going to say DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci White Gamut because that's what's exporting from here. So that's what's going to get imported here. And then we're going to say Rec. 709. We're going to say Gamma 2.4. Voila. What the hell is going on? There's something really crazy happening here, boys and girls, because if I bring my Rec. 709 version, when you brought in that image, it looked like this. And for its face value, everything looked great. And we were so happy. But now, after what I just took you through, a mini masterclass that you didn't have to pay for, you're welcome. Look what we got going on here. I mean, just look at this, how gunky, horrible this is. I mean, this is worse than shooting something with a fucking iPhone. And now look at the results that you're getting. Now, this is the difference between a professional and a beginner working with red footage. So anytime when somebody tells me, hey, dude, 
Why are you showing me how to work with red footage? Why don't you show me how to work with an iPhone footage? Well, first of all, somebody who's going to be shooting their stuff with an iPhone is not somebody that you want to work for. They're not going to have the fucking budget for shit. Now, let's be realistic. Do you really know how to work with red? Because you've been working like this your entire life. And I just showed you a way that completely change the game for everybody that's watching this video. And if you are enjoying what's being dropped here, genuinely take that and 10 exit. I mean, just look at the kind of stuff we cover in my 30 plus hours of self-paced training where we have over 6,800 happy students that are absolutely crushing the game. A lot of those guys, you're already following. You've seen their work. They're working with tier one clients. So if you want to level up your grading game, and really start taking this thing seriously, then you should definitely take advantage of the YouTube fam exclusive discount, 15% off my masterclass. If you click the link in the description right now, I'll see you on the other side. Let's get back to the video. All right, so now that we have this going on and we cleaned up that murky crap that was happening, guys, just look at this, look at our vector scope. Now, imagine working like this on 1,000 shots compared to having a clean image like that. So now we have a clean slate. Look at all of this. I can right click. I can go to linear. You've heard me talk about linear many times now. I've already done a video. I'm going to throw a link here. Link is going to be in the description so you can check out that video, why we work in linear. It's because this is the closest thing to how our eyes perceive color and exposure. So now I'm in linear. I can go ahead and start raising it up a little bit. And let's just say I want to be somewhere around here. So now that's going to be my overall exposure. Do I want to cool it off a little bit? Maybe I can just do something like that. I don't mind that. Now here, I can just click right here, do 335 um, to lock in my 18% gray. So we don't necessarily mess with my boy's skin exposure. And then we make changes on our contrast on the top and the bottom end. And if you want to learn more, there's going to be another video link in the description. Check it out. So now if I go and do something like this, let's just say, and if I just come back, I want to cool it off a little bit more. Even something like that, maybe pull the saturation back a little bit. Maybe go back in there, hit the contrast a little bit more, something like that. And now if we just take this, boom, boom. And now if I compare it to what our garbage setup was before compared to where we ended up, I think I want to warm it up now a little bit. So even something like that, what we ended up with. And this is why it is so important to understand just enough. This is my entire goal. All I'm trying to do on this channel is literally give you the most practical knowledge. Like if somebody out there is working with red footage and if you were doing this, I just saved you that particular client because now your footage is gonna look like this and their knickers are gonna hit the floor when they see it, that you are so fucking good. So everything that we did here, you can apply it to whether you're working with Canon or Blackmagic. Always stick with the last or the latest gen, color science. And if you have any questions about that, just Google it really quick. Whichever camera you're working with, what's their latest update, their latest color science that they're trying to push? And do not waste time trying to do it the old way. Just stick with the latest color science. I mean, just think about this, guys. These guys spend millions of dollars in research and development. So just trust these companies. They know better about their product than you and I can. If you guys found this video helpful, then do me a favor. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh.